Hey everyone, Lazy here, and just like with the sniper video, I have a ton of extra footage to throw your way. These clips were either just too funny for me to throw away, or explain some point that I didn't have time to make in the main video. Also, I know it's Halloween and all, but I don't really have a spooky video for you because my life is very normal right now, and I am not in any danger. Hello? Hello, can you hear this? Listen guys, the Pyromanes have taken me hostage. They were pissed that I didn't talk more about wm one or Pyro's wide variety of weapons, so they're making me do it all over. First of all, trust me when I say that I really wish I had thought of a way to include more wm one clips. It's not like I don't wm one it's just that wm one clips tend to be drawn out and I don't know what to say about them. I mean, I killed a lot of people and then died? Hooray? I will say though that some real magic can happen in the rare instances that a medic uses their crits or uber on you. Like what other class can get 8 kills with just one click of the mouse? Now of course, some people are on a never ending crusade to demonize WM1. Pyro is overpowered! But this clip might change their mind. I have this scout right where I want him. This is the perfect situation to WM1 him, right? And yet... You might say, oh, well, you're not doing it right. You gotta use the back burner. But I found myself baffled at how stingy the game is about being behind someone. Like, is this your back? Is this your back? Oh, oh, okay, that was your back. Next, please observe this image. Would you say I'm behind this medic? Apparently not. How about now? How about now? How about no, I was apparently never behind him. You might then say, oh, well, you're still not doing it right. Where's your jetpack? To which I say, wow, thanks, jetpack. There's nowhere I'd rather be than in between three heavies. <laughs> I even tried doing it from a much higher point and still got caught on the way down. Either I'm doing it wrong or I'm just getting really unlucky every time I try it, but it just doesn't work for me. I guess what I'm trying to say is that all things considered, WM1 isn't broken good or broken bad, and it does take some skill to know when you should commit to it. You know, I actually agree with the pyromains on this one, but it can feel like bullshit when the WM1 pyro has a pocket medic. Wait, why am I defending them right now? Please, somebody send help! I'm currently located at- <laughs> Finally now I can talk about Pyro secondaries. I had a whole bit written up about them where I was going to put them on a scale from annoying to lethal, but the video didn't have room for it in the end. <laughs> Guys, I'm serious right now. This isn't some ha-ha funny shit, alright? I really appreciate that you saved my ass. Why is nobody coming to save me? <laughs> Let's start with a crowd favorite, the Scorch Shot. Yes, yes, okay, look, I get that this thing is a bit annoying. I mean, in just these seven seconds of footage, I've set five people on fire. At least I'm having fun. And things can get really sad when you use this thing to trap the enemy in their spawn. Move. But remember, if you think that the Scorch Shot is unfun to play against, you are objectively wrong. I can't say this, that's ridiculous. Everyone can have an opinion about it. Ah! <laughs> Listen, I actually do like playing Pyro, okay? But I get that it's not fun for everyone. If they would just let me explain, I'd tell you that. Oh god, they hurt me. Oh god, I have to run. I'm sorry, I'm... <laughs> then we have the detonator. It's very satisfying to time a detonation that sends two snipers running ablaze, and then dying to an obvious spy because you were focusing way too hard on timing your next detonation. But the real pleasure of the detonator is watching some chumps run up the stairs and then deciding you're too cool for that shit. And then you have the good old flare gun. Oh my god, oh my god, they're right there, oh my god, god, no, 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 no. One of Pyro's most skillful secondaries, using the flare gun is the only time I've gotten the enemy's respect. Nice flare. If I had to give this weapon a tagline, it would be, haha, I can kill anyone, as long as they're moving in a straight line. The flare gun isn't used much these days, but back in my day, it was much better because air blast used to send your opponent in a completely unwavering straight line. The flare combo is much harder to pull off now, so throw some respect at the handsome pyros that still insist on using it. Okay, I think I lost them. Oh my god, I think I lost them. This beard! I have to get rid of this beard! Uh, change my name, maybe. Oh man, oh man! <laughs> Good thing this video is sponsored by Dollar Shave Club! 
Whether your beard is purple or some more normal color like pink or green, Dollar Shave Club has got you covered for all your grooming needs, whether it be showering, oral care, deodorant, or most importantly, shaving. Their shave starter set keeps it simple, sending you exactly what you need to get a smooth, high-quality shave. I really appreciate how the executive razor handle has some weight to it. It doesn't feel flimsy and makes every stroke of the razor feel like it has a purpose. Attaching and removing the blades couldn't be easier, so if you're like me and can only enjoy something if it's unreasonably challenging, try playing Dark Souls with one hand and attaching the blade with the other. God, come on! Ah! Now you might be wondering what this tube is for. Uh? No, that's not Frosty the Snowman, just another fool still using an opaque shaving cream. How can he know where his beard is like this? That's why Dollar Shave Club's shaving butter is crystal clear, leaving this picture of the mountains prettier than ever. Wow! And for a limited time, new members get their first month of the Executive Razor with a trial tube of Dr. Carver's Shea Butter for only $5. After that, the restock box ships regular-sized products at regular price. So head on over to dollarshaveclub.com slash lazypurple to get your first starter set for just $5. Because when you support Dollar Shave Club, you help them support creators like me. Oh god, it's them. I've got to be more quiet. Well, since we're doing a behind-the-scenes video anyway, I might as well show you how I've been recording all my audio. That's right. This is me, right now, under a blanket, speaking to you. At least, until I fix this room's acoustics. Big thank yous from McSpankies to Soundsmith for the advice of recording under a blanket. Anyway, the pyromanes won't hear me now, so let's press on. Some pyros insist on using stock shotgun, and while I find that to be a respectable choice, it just makes me feel like a slower scout that keeps a flamethrower secondary for reflex. I much prefer the panic attack since it encourages you to play with the degreaser for instant switch action. Believe it or not, the degreaser and panic attack combo is the highest single target damage that Pyro can do, making it possible to 1v1 heavies now. This is because the fire particles linger and do damage even while you're sneaking in a shotgun hit. In other words, you practically get to dual wield them. Ah! More importantly, using the panic attack as a finisher can quickly secure you kills that were just about to get away. Not this time, Demo Man. I actually ended up preferring the panic attack so much that I'd often forget to change my playstyle when trying out flare guns, continuing to charge at heavies. Oh no, what the hell is this thing? I am amused! You might have noticed that I only ever used the power jack. Personally, I can't live without the power jack speed boost. And because the power jack encourages you to wear it around, you tend to end up with a lot of moments like this. Now I do equip the home wrecker on defense, and I've tried to do some cool things with the extinguisher, but uh, did that count? See, there's an old joke among pyromanes that goes something like this. This is what the power jack looks like to people who don't play pyro. And this is what it feels like to people who do play pyro. Also, the ability to make jumps that you couldn't without the power jack comes up way more often than you'd think. Holy what? Oh no! And now, if you'll allow me, I'm about to pop off and dump like two dozen air blast cliffs on you. It's okay, suck. I just cannot believe how many uniquely funny situations this mechanic can get you into, whether it's scaring a demo man into detonating some misplaced bombs, or stopping a sticky jumping demo man from leaving your spawn. Freedom! No, please, I insist that you stay my good man. What just happened? The Demo Man clips just keep coming as this Demo Knight shows us why Air Blast completely counters him. See, Demo Knights are free game for an Air Blasting Pyro. There's just nothing they can do to get around it. Demo night TF2. Demo night TF2. <laughs> oh my god! Now that might have been too much to handle, but with Air Blast, you can usually handle a solo Uber charge. <laughs> 
Engineer, no, this is not the time for building a dispenser. Now this clip probably would have made it into the main video if this next part lined up better. I air blast the soldier one last time into a well-placed spy, and if the spy was just maybe a little quicker and stabbed the soldier right as he landed, there was an opportunity for an SFM where the spy is like, making the game-winning catch. This next clip also almost made it in with an SFM bit. I wanted to illustrate how these point blank reflex where you don't even see their projectile come out feel like some sort of Bugs Bunny Looney Tunes bit. What? Oh no! Hold on, real quick, I'd like to take a moment to thank Alax for making this model, as well as the animatable pyro mask, angel devil combo, the panic attack trigger, some models for this bit, the baby mercenaries, the stretchable spy mask, and even this scout head. On that same note, thank you to Arde for animating this whole scene, Circuit for assisting this freeze frame, 9joa06 for this Minecraft torch particle, and all my patrons that frequent my Discord for their feedback. Good production is a team effort. <clears throat> now back to it. One of the most satisfying situations is to surprise an enemy that's already shooting your teammate. But hey, no, stop shooting at my sniper! And I'd like to enlighten you all to the zen of double reflex. The process of taking two stray rockets crossing paths and guiding them to a converging point, restoring order to all things. This next double reflect is not so graceful, however, as I surprise what appears to be a symbiotic union of two default soldiers shooting two rockets at the same time, instantly killing one of them and watching as the other one politely burns to death. This reflex was graceful in its own way, perfectly skimming the control point to reach its destination of two unfortunate fellows. That was upsetting. Oh, and here's a bit of a pro tip. Any soldier worth his salt will not shoot you if he doesn't have to, so be sure to threaten them with fire, even if your only intent is to hit a reflect. Some soldiers, however, need not be provoked. Hey, soldier, can I borrow another rocket? Okay. Thanks. Right. And just a friendly reminder to the soldiers out there, rocket jumping at me in a straight line does not make you invincible. Um, excuse me, soldier. I'm a little busy here with more important things. Come on, come on. Okay, got it. Apologies to Banny in advance, but I just had to include this clip somewhere of me completely stuffing him in the last seconds of the round. Best TF2 player in the world, huh? Then why doesn't he main Pyro, am I right, guys? Can't get any shots on the point. <laughs> See, even he's having fun. <laughs> alright, alright, just a few more air blast clips. Not many things are more painful than watching a soldier shoot a rocket at you from 50 yards and get three of his teammates hit in the reflect, resulting in a lost point. Don't be that soldier. <laughs> This soldier, however, took the full brunt of his mistake, taking 296 damage and presumably flying to the moon. And finally, I just have to showcase that you can single-handedly capture the cart with the power of air blast. See ya, soldier! Oh, look, the heavy! There he goes! That's what I'm talking about! And easy! Hopefully, seeing how much air blast can do might help you understand why the flog's lack of it justifies the absolutely wild ability to store Chris. I don't know what to say about this one. Find that viral now, double stop! <laughs> what? Are you okay? No, I'm not, dude! Am I dreaming? What just happened? But see, there is a bit of nuance to using the flog. A pyro with crits often walks at you so predictably that it's possible to outplay them. So if you're using the flog, don't be that pyro. I panic pop crits here, but I know that the demo man is smart enough to immediately put down a sticky trap. So I hold back, no matter how painful it is. Sure enough, the demo man can't believe it and comes out to check perishing horribly. And lastly, try to remember that it's essential to have full health before popping Chris. Before we get to the SFM atrocities, I'd just like to share this short montage of catching spies at their worst. Why did you stop? <laughs> this is mine. Hi, 
Zoro, please. No! Now I was going to explain these SFM glitches, but honestly, they explain themselves. Even without the glitches, SFM is full of surprises. It turns out that this Demonite charge effect we're used to isn't compatible with SFM, and the next best thing is to attach seven instances of Scout's Bonk particle instead. Honestly, my brain has blocked out the memories of this process, but just imagine that every time I wanted to make a change to something, I had to go into the editor for each particle and do it seven times. What? What is that? How is that? And making the Minecraft scene was a bit of a chore. That's right, I had to manually place every single block, and it was not easy to get everything aligned. This next one's just a bit silly. For some reason, these torches don't move unless you record gameplay, so every time I wanted to render out this scene, I had to stuff a scout into this corner. How's it going, fellas? Let's get to work. For this shot, I needed to put the camera where Demo Man's head would be, so I had to move Demo Man's head. Ah! And finally, how else did you think I got this giant heavy hand? If you're a new subscriber, check out this playlist of all the How It Feels episodes. Also, I might start streaming a bit on Twitch, so check out the description. A huge thanks to Denzel, Zeke, Aftox, Arrow Sky, Filth, Happy Purple, Waffle God of Puns, Frozen Spaghetti, Jared Goodroad, King Madding, Mr. Figgles, and Trophy Waifu.